That barely scratched my paint. Human insects, your so-called military is a joke. Welcome back, Autobots, to Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover why Wreckage was cut from the Transformers 2007 movie. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now during the production of the various Transformers movies, many characters have been pitched to make their on-screen debut, but ultimately the majority of them did not make the cut. However, a handful of them despite not appearing in the film they were initially pitched for, would end up appearing in a sequel. The most famous example of this would be RC, who almost made it into the Transformers 2007 film. Getting so far into production, that she had her own toy, and as we know she would later appear in the sequel Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. However, there is another character that doesn't get talked about nowhere near as much as RC, who also got very far in production and got a toy as well, but unlike RC, he wouldn't make it into any sequel. The character I'm talking about is Wreckage. Though we don't know when the idea of having Wreckage appear in a movie was thought up, the earliest piece of info that we have on him would be this concept art that was shown off at BACON 2007, which was held from June 28th to July 1st, 2007. Each day had different Transformers related events. However, on the second to last day, there was a Hasbro tour which centered around the Transformers 2007 movie. As part of this tour, fans were able to view some early concept art for the film. One such concept art showed a robot named Stryker. Now you may be wondering why this character's name on the concept art is Stryker and not wreckage. And well, that is because the name comes from his vehicle mode, which is a M1126 Striker infantry carrier vehicle. It's a common practice for concept art designers to name the robot after the vehicle they transform into, since they don't know when and more so if their concept will be approved. Usually once a concept art is approved, that is when a name is officially attached to it. Now we know this character was planned to be wreckage due to an interview Wizard Universe had with screenwriters Roberto Orki and Alex Kurtzman. On July 10th, 2007, WizardUniverse.com made an article covering the BotCon panel where the screenwriters talked about what ended up on the cutting room floor. When asked why Wreckage and RC were dropped from the film, Kurtzman and Orki would give a lengthy response for RC, but when Wizard Universe pressed on Wreckage, Kurtzman would give a short response saying, Wreckage wasn't actually even in our first draft. And from here, that's really all the info that we have on Wreckage being planned for the live action movie. And despite him not showing up in the film, Wreckage would be attached to a lot of tie-in media. He is most well known for his appearances in the comics, where he went head to head with Starscream, almost killing him until Bumblebee showed up giving Starscream the distraction he needed in order to kill Wreckage. Wreckage would also appear in two Transformers games, those being Flight of the Bumblebee and AllSpark Highway. Now, if you ever played those games before Adobe Flash was shut down, you're definitely a true OG. Another game to note is Transformers Revenge of the Fallen The Game. Though Wreckage did not appear in this, his vehicle mode did albeit now with a missile launcher attachment. The M1126 Striker ICVs were the alt modes for the Combaticon Warriors. I bring this up since according to concept artist Ken Christensen, the Combaticon Warrior almost did not make it into the game, due to Hasbro requesting the character to be redesigned to resemble the movie toy design of Wreckage. On July 10th, 2009, Christensen stated on his blog, Since we used a Striker for the Warrior, Hasbro came back and asked us to use the Wreckage design from the first movie's toy line. The problem was, and annoyingly, they didn't mention this until after we turned in the final design for approval. Weeks earlier, they proved the fact that Luxo wanted to do a striker, and that is when they should have asked us to movieify wreckage. I wouldn't have been against it. But afterwards? For my part of the budget, a lot of time and money had been spent on the Combaticon Warrior, and there really was no time to do another one. And the simple fact, he is one of my favorites I did for this game. So the guys from Luxo and myself had a quasi vote and pushed back against Hasbro and said no. While we were waiting though, I whipped up this as a test just to see how a repaint would look. Luxo never knew I did this, I just wanted it in my back pocket in case we had to redo the character. Thankfully, due to Ken and the team at Luxoflux, we were able to get this awesome design for the Combaticon Warrior, allowing him to make his debut in Transformers Dark of the Moon The Game and Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. 
And maybe one day, if the rumors are true that Hasbro is going to make a Voyager breakaway figure, we may see a figure of the Combaticon Warrior sometime in the future. Since we're on the topic of figures, when it came to designing a toy for Wreckage, there's an interesting piece of trivia attached to it. During BotCon 2008's designer panel, it was revealed that the reason why Wreckage's head doesn't match the Striker concept art was because Takara could not make out the detail from the design sketches that were sent to them. Aaron Archer came to the rescue and drew a new head in five minutes before catching a plane to Tokyo. Another thing is that the Wreckage toy sports an Arctic camo color scheme, which is not present in the concept art. However, in the Revenge of the Fallen toy line, there was a deluxe bludgeon figure which was a redeco of the Wreckage toy. This color scheme was a one-to-one -one match with the concept art. Interestingly enough, before this bludgeon figure was set to release, images of it leaked online but nobody knew who it was supposed to be because no name was attached to it. This caught the eye of IDW Publishing, and they used this color scheme as an upgraded form for Wreckage. Lastly, you may be wondering why Wreckage was cut. And though we don't have an official answer, the closest thing we have to it is what Aaron Archer said during the Hasbro tour in 2007. And try to listen closely because the audio isn't the best. There was no, the script wasn't finished yet, so they didn't know who was going to be in it and whatnot. Uh, ultimately, she was dropped, and this was as far as it went. Another character, Wreckage, which became a toy, uh, was dropped as well. And all these were, were form studies, you know. That, it wasn't like they were dropped, they were never, never in the script, but uh, they're cool designs regardless. In addition to this, I believe another reason why he was cut was due to the budget of the film. Michael Bay wanted to have a lot more robots in the 07 film, but due to how expensive it was to make them, it was just way too expensive. I actually wanted more robots than we had, but it just ultimately got too expensive. Furthermore, it could be possible that Wreckage's concept art eventually evolved into Brawl, since the two are both green military vehicles. However, there is no evidence to definitively prove that. But really, at the end of the day, we don't officially know why he was scrapped. And just like that, that was Wreckage the Scrap Decepticon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing. Thank you.